What happens when the Dark Knight and the Man of Steel end up getting embroiled in an intergalactic cinematic conspiracy that spans the multiverse? Well, let's hop into the pages of Batman Superman issue number 17 and find out together, shall we? So then, at the end of the last mind-bending issue, you'll remember that Batman and Superman had gone up into space to investigate an alien craft. To their surprise, this thing was filled with what looked to be, well, film stock as well as a bunch of killer robots. It turns out this place is called The Archive, and it's run by a dude called, get this, The Auteur, but it's spelled in binary because he's a robot. He's an intergalactic filmmaker who has managed to create actual other living, breathing worlds inside his film strips as he travels across the stars trying to make the perfect movie. And unfortunately for Batman and Superman, the auteur finds their performances flat and unconvincing, and as such, he has pegged them for death. <laughs> yeah, you know, I hear Kubrick used to do that all the time back in the day. They don't let you kill your stars anymore, though. Now, back in the worlds of the film reels, two completely unrelated universes of Batman and Superman had ended up crossing over when Lois Lane fell into another world where Superman didn't exist. That world's Batman and Robin ended up scooping her up, believing her to be the Spider-Woman, a brand new villainess who they had been doing battle against. Fun fact, the Spider-Woman was actually an original serial villain for the superheroes back during the Golden Age. Now, the Superman from Lois's world ends up giving chase, and at first, Batman and Robin believe him to be another one of the new villains that they've been fighting against. That opinion changes, though, when Superman actually saves them from a bunch of incoming fighter jets. Batman agrees to take Superman and Lois back to the cave, but only on the condition that they wear blindfolds. This is positively hilarious because this Batman has no idea that Superman has x-ray vision and can totally see through the blindfolds, but Superman does it anyway because he's a nice guy. The two groups end up comparing notes and Batman comes to the astute realization that they must certainly be from another world, one that started off very similar to their own until something very major changed, and the Dark Knight thinks he knows exactly what that moment was. You see, a couple years back, Back in this world, the Daily Planet was destroyed, blown up under some rather suspicious circumstances, and no one that worked there ended up surviving, except for maybe the Spider Lady, who is of course the lowest lane of this world. Knowing that she might have a villainous doppelganger, naturally sleuth journalist reporter Lois wants to go to this world's Metropolis for a sit-down interview, and we see that in a world without a Superman, Metropolis has fallen on very hard times, getting almost as bad as Gotham. Never let it be said, though, that the Spider Lady doesn't have a sense of nostalgia or irony as we discover she makes her place of operation the Spider's Nest, Metropolis's number one hotel casino built out of the ruins of the Daily Planet. Our heroes end up running into some major opposition, though, as they are confronted by the Arkham Warden from the previous issue, and he's not alone either. We saw that Joker, Penguin, and Killer Croc had been arrested. And in the time in between issues, the Warden had experimented on them, turning them into horrifying monsters that Batman and Robin need to fight while Superman and Lois confront the Spider-Woman. While Spider-Woman tries to put up a tough fight of her own at first, eventually she breaks down and spills the beans on what exactly is going on here. It seems that she had been working an expose on a mysterious villain calling themselves Dr. Adam. Adam seemed to be heading up a secret society of supervillains that are able to move freely in between the worlds of the film strips. This is no doubt why the Daily Planet was targeted here in this world, and while Lois may have survived the explosion, it clearly changed her forever. In fact, she talks about feeling as though her life had been edited and huge parts of who she were left on the cutting room floor. If nothing else, though, she was drawn to the old Daily Planet building and where she says the lines between the film strips are weak for those who know where to attack them. Superman uses his heat vision to try and open up another portal around the same time we realize this Arkham Warden is not only packing some kryptonite on him, but he's also a Lex Luthor from another world. And he may just have been able to overpower the Man of Steel too, were it not around the same time the auteur figured that he could use a prop for his own battle against Batman. Batman and Superman happening in the real world. With the tables turned against the good guys and all seeming as if it's lost, it's at that moment right there the comic chooses to come to an end on yet another big cliffhanger. And so that was Batman Superman issue number 17, everybody, and once again, Gene Lu and Yang manages to deliver one of the most creative outside-the-box Batman Superman stories I've seen in a very long time. In fact, I'm almost in awe in how this story is able to basically do a one-for-one -one recreation of classic Golden Age comic book stories in a modern-day parlance and have it all make sense. 
The auteur is such a hilariously awesome concept for a villain, I hope he gets to stick around for a while. Overall, I feel comfortable giving this one an 8.5 out of 10, and I can't wait to see how this story ends up wrapping up. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.